Uh, my name is Bishek. I work in Red Hat uh, on uh, systemd upstream uh, development and also I maintain the systemd package in Fedora uh, and a bunch of other packages and I'm active in, in uh, Fesco. And this talk is about um, a new approach to uh, how we could generate uh, our init rd images. So, uh, uh, a short disclaimer that um, I don't want to say that the stuff that we did before is bad. I think it, there were reasons, very good reasons, to do things the way that they were done, but um, the technology landscape has changed a bit, and I think it's good to uh, think about a new approach. So, uh, so what, what is an initRD and why why do we need it? Um, uh, when the kernel initially boots, uh, the the bootloader uh, can pass an extra file system to it, uh, and uh, the, the this this file system is unpacked by the uh, kernel and serves as early uh, user space before the real root is mounted. And the, the main goal of this uh, early user space is to mount the real root file system. Uh, the kernel uh, obviously can mount file systems and uh, can often do uh, this also for the root file system on its own. But um, nowadays we like to have you know, a RAID array and on top of this RAID array, maybe put a, um, a an encryption layer, and on top of this encryption layer, some LVM uh, structure. And uh, this is too complicated for the kernel, and it needs help from the user space to to arrange such a um, uh, storage uh, stack. Uh, and this is what the initRD does. And then it from the initRD, we transition to the to mount the real uh, root file system and transition to it, and then execute the, the real init in this real root file system. And um, in this talk and in systemd documentation, uh, we say initRD, even though technically it's an initRMFS. So an initRD is a um, slightly old, older version of this of this idea that you have a um, in-memory block device. Uh, and read files from this block device. And with an initMFS, we kind of do away with the block device part and just unpack and archive uh, into a temporary file system and access files from memory without a, a block device. Um, uh, yes, I'm using Beamer. Uh, I like it a lot. So uh, let me talk about the current approach uh, that we use everywhere in Fedora. Mm. We have Dracut, and Dracut is a complicated beast because, uh, well, it labels itself as generic MFS infrastructure. And I, I think it, it's fair to divide it into like four parts. So uh, first, Dracut uh, decides what should go into the initRD. Uh, and uh, so, so you have Dracut modules that provide some functionality, and you select which ones should be available in the module, uh, in the in the initRD image, and they, there are also mechanisms for dependency resolutions between modules, uh, and you know automatically pulling in other stuff when appropriate. Uh, then Dracut provides a bunch of helpers to to do the to create the image, uh, and a very important one is uh, Dracut install, which installs a binary. But it doesn't just select a binary. It it's, looks at the binary, um, figures out which libraries this binary is linked to, and recursively pulls in um, those libraries so that uh, actually we can start the um, binary in the intermFS. And then there are uh, helpers to install kernel modules, udev roles, uh, arbitrary files, and so on and so on. So in general, the approach is to construct the image file by file, uh, dependency by dependency, to make it as small as possible. And then uh, Dracut uh, creates an, a CPIO archive from this and zips it up, and the, the image is ready. And once we reboot into this image, 
uh, Dracut um, has an execution queue, um, so it, 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 it waits uh, and reacts to events and does things. And uh, there are helpers to um, also do various things in the IntelliJ. So, so Dracut has a bunch of, of uh, scripts and hooks and things that, that happen in, in response to those events. And one of the modules that we um, use is a, a module that installs systemd. So Dracut has udev and has systemd in the interd. And of course, uh, systemd uh, well, needs to support running in the intermfs. And actually, uh, many of the things that Dracut now does in the interd are done uh, through systemd. Uh, so, uh, you know, this, this raises the question whether um, we need a, I mean, you, why do we need an execution queue that's provided by Dracut to manage an execution queue inside of systemd? Uh, and, you know, can we, can we simplify all that? Uh, so, you might think that the initRD is super special. Uh, to some extent, this used to be true. I mean, we, we used to use, uh, we as in, it's like in, in general in Linux, uh, in, I'm not sure in Fedora actually, uh, binaries linked to klibc, not glibc. And um, some very strange things were done in the init RD. Uh, for example, busybox was used and so on. But nowadays, mm, we generally, just install normal binaries. Uh, so if we take a Fedora image that is used, for example, in a uh, VM and uh, pack it up as, a, as an interd, it will almost work. Um, the kernel expects a slash init symlink instead of, uh, well, a slash init binary uh, instead of has been in it. Uh, and that's how, how the kernel uh, knows that it's an initRD image, not a, um, not a normal operating system. And uh, that's pretty much it as far as the kernel is concerned. And uh, systemd checks for the presence of the etc initRD release file instead of OS release. And then it behaves slightly differently. So for example, it will uh, start a different set of units by default. Uh, and um, as I said, systemd is also present in the interd, uh, and systemd likes to set up the environment um, very early on. So it will mount, you know, like proc, slash dev, uh, slash sys, uh, and if programs are executed later on in the interd, they are executed in pretty much the same environment as they would be um, in the host system. Because the exact same system decode is used to set up this environment. So this necessarily, this wasn't necessarily true in the past. I mean, it, it probably was pretty much untrue. Uh, but uh, now uh, there isn't that much of a difference. Uh, oh, and I wanted to mention that uh, we use initRD twice during a normal lifetime of a, of a system. First during boot, and then uh, we transition back to the initRD for shutdown. And the reason for this is that uh, if we build up this complicated storage stack or, or do some other preparation during uh, boot, um, then the uh, root file system is mounted on top of this set of um, block devices, and we cannot uh, unmount them. Uh, okay, we, we cannot properly clean them up until we have unmounted the root file system. So we switch back to an initRD image uh, and undo everything we did during boot up. Uh, so it's I mean, the, not only is the mm, uh, uh, initRD image very similar to a real environment, we switch back and forth regularly between initRD and the, the real 
uh, file system. Uh, and I want to say that, you know, like, uh, there is no functionality that we would require in, in the interd that we wouldn't want uh, in the host. So all kinds of storage, right? And in, in particular, if we are able to mount, I don't know, uh, degraded RAID arrays in the interd, we also want to do this uh, in the real uh, system for, for debugging. And I mean, it would be strange not to be able to anyway. Uh, all kinds of file systems, networking stuff, uh, if we need it here, we, we also need it in the, in the uh, real um, system. And not to the same extent, but to a large extent, everything that we do in the, the, the host, we also may want to do in the interd. So uh, as an example, you might say, well, we don't need Bluetooth and sound in the in interd, but I don't think this is true. Now, if you if we enter emergency mode because our uh, mm, disk doesn't boot uh, and we need to debug stuff and our keyboard is on on is a Bluetooth keyboard, then most likely we want Bluetooth. And uh, two days ago during Matthew Miller's talk, there was a question about um, the state of accessibility in Fedora. I assume that if you have a screen reader that you use. Uh, during uh, normal lifetime of the machine, you probably also want it in, in the in interd so that you can, I don't know, type in a password or debug things. And this pulls in um, at least the, the sound stack and uh, probably various other things. So uh, at least in principle, we need to be prepared to put arbitrary stuff in the in interd. Um, people commonly ask for uh, SSH to be activated uh, if we enter an emergency mode in the interd, uh, and so on and so on. So, um, yes, and uh, mm, this wasn't true in the past, but nowadays uh, we do things through binaries and through demons that do do, do and and not not necessarily scripts. So we would use the same um, binaries in the interd as, as on the host. Uh, so I said that Jakut is um, those four areas and I want to replace this by a different scheme. So the configuration mechanism will be just a list of RPMs. Let me um, do this in a kind of a hand wavy fashion for now. So I have some list of RPMs. Um, and I create the, the image by calling dnf install dash dash install root uh, and zip this up into a CPIO archive. Uh, and uh, once we reboot uh, into this image, uh, we have an execution queue. Uh, we don't need to check one, we can just use system D and let system D do, the, do its job. And um, now uh, all the rest, uh, it's there's a solution, plain old ordinary RPMs, and they in general provide all the functionality that we need. Um, so, I mean, people have been talking about this for for a while, uh, using an approach more like this, but um, I mean, like the, the thing that comes up the most uh, is that the resulting image would be too large. So I hope I'll have time for uh, some uh, Q&A at the end, but let me kind of preemptively answer some uh, possible uh, uh, questions now. So uh, if we have RPMs that are too large, then the, the answer is to split them up. Uh, this doesn't benefit just this use case, but it benefits, you know, like container images, cloud uh, installations, live CDs, flat packs, uh, embedded devices and so on. Or if the RPM has too many dependencies, we actually have a mm, mm, council uh, uh, objective to, to minimize stuff. And, you know, we have graphs and, and so on. And people try to make things, uh, I mean, to, to reduce the dependency tree. And again, if we do it 
there, it helps here, and vice versa. And uh, if some RPM doesn't work in the interd, since the interd is pretty much a normal, um, I mean, looks like a normal normal system, then I would say that this 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 RPM is broken. Maybe, uh, I mean, maybe it will also be broken in a container or, or in some other uh, minimal installation, and just needs to be fixed. Uh, so, what what does this give us? Well, uh, the the installation becomes trivially easy, and RPM is very good at uh, installing files, uh, and uh, we don't need a separate. Uh, mechanism to, to do dependency resolution. We just specify some top-level list of packages uh, and the dependencies get pulled in. Uh, and actually with Jackwood, this is a the common problem that uh, some new file is added to an RPM. Uh, the, the packagers, uh, maintainers of this RPM uh, add this file to, uh, and take care of, of changes that need to be done. And then this needs to be rediscovered uh, by Dracut maintainers because how would Dracut know? Unless it's a library that, that is pulled in through, uh, through linkage, we need, we need to re-add this information to, to Dracut. Uh, and um, when we install things from RPMs, we don't pull files from the host. So right now, if there's a corrupted binary somewhere, it will be pulled into the InterMFS image. Um, Images are reproducible, right? Because from the same recipe, we should get output that is bit for bit identical in every case. Um, and in general, we kind of simplify things because uh, instead of having bash scripts that manage other bash scripts, we just use uh, DNF. Uh, and we stop wrapping uh, our binaries in um, shell. Um, helpers and shell uh, uh, execution queue and so on. And the last two items are kind of um, uh, social uh, things. So right now, if we have a, if we find some issue during boot, the uh, package a, the new version of package A does not work with the current version of package B. Uh, there are at least three parties involved. So maintainers of A, maintainers of B, and maintainers of Dracut, because the environment is so special that we can't necessarily say what is the source of the of the issue. And uh, well, by, by just using normal RPMs in a normal environment, we, um, uh, we reduce this to two. So it's either a bug in A or a bug in B, and uh, it needs to be solved there. So uh, we stop centralizing the um, management of, of Dracut bugs or, or initrd bugs uh, and let package maintainers handle them in most cases. And finally, whatever we do to make things better, it, it also reuses in other contexts. Uh, I mean, like in the spirit of open source. Uh, so, uh, uh, this was like my my motivation, my overview, and um, now I want to talk a bit about uh, my approach, how to implement this, and uh, I want to make a disclaimer that, as I said, it's basically um, DNF install uh, from existing packages, some minimal cleanup, and, and you know, like uh, the, the minor additions that need to be added to to create an uh, initrd image, and then this is. Uh, zipped up with CPIO and, and compressed. So, um, I'll I'll be talking about an implementation, but it's it's a really minor thing. Um, so, uh, MKSI is a Python program that uh, was created um, for the purpose of testing systemd on different distributions. So it's like a a, a, a small helper that will call. Um, for example, DNF to install um, uh, Fedora packages, or it will call uh, Pacman to install Arch packages, and so on. So it doesn't 
I mean, it sets up a temporary device uh, and an area to do the installation, but the actual installation is done by uh, programs specific to some distribution. And um, uh, the no normal use with MKSI is then to actually build uh, the, the the program like system D that you want to test in this uh, freshly installed environment and install it there and boot it. Uh, for this use case, I mean, for the use case of initRDs, I'm not interested in the second step. So I'm just using MKSI to, to call DNF and create an, an image. Um, and uh, I added functionality to do MKSI to create CPIO archives and to compress them with Z, Z standard. Um, you might uh, ask why the second part is necessary. Well, um, my images are a bit bigger than the images we have currently, and uncompressing them with XZ was uh, noticeably slow. So, so I, I thought that it's best to, to kind of hide this by switching to Z standard. Uh, and uh, I considered some alternatives. Uh, I couldn't. Uh, make them, I mean, I talked with Kiwi and G de developers and I had very good responses, uh, but um, uh, I mean, it's my use case wasn't covered uh, natively as far as I could see and, but I think it could be made to work with some, some maybe some even very minimal changes to Kiwi. Um, I also looked at OS build. Um, so I think that the, the implementation is not so important uh, because it's really not that much uh, functionality. Um, so, I mean, may, maybe uh, even if the scheme is adopted, maybe a different approach will be used in the end. It does, this doesn't matter so much. Uh, and now I want to do a demo, uh, but this would mean that I would need to sh uh, share a different, different screen. Hmm. So, um, uh, yes, answering to Neil. Yes, I think, uh, well, I, I want to motivate you to provide the necessary functionality. I couldn't figure it out, but uh, I'm sure it's possible. Uh, so, uh, I will try to build an init ID image for my machine. Uh, uh, oh, so, uh, the command that I'm calling is uh, sudo. I need privilege because MKR assigns to set up a, um, a loopback device and uh, it need, this requires privileges. Uh, MKRSI, uh, the F means that it, I want to override the existing file that is already there. Uh, this is the output file name. And I'll call this first with summary um, and uh, summary doesn't actually do anything. It prints out what would be done. So I'm installing for Fedora version 34, output format CPIO, uh, the output file name, and here's my package list. Um, and I, well, okay, let's now do this for real. Um, uh, this calls DNF and DNF let's refresh the cache uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so let me scroll up a bit uh, uh, to the list of RPMs so those were the RPMs that were uh, specified there. You will notice that I specified like uh, some file paths. So DNF, of course, turned this turns this into um, uh, program package program names uh, package names. So I specified uh, like uh, the, the checker for XFS and it, I get XFS problems and so on. And uh, the dependency how. Uh, so I'm the usual for the right thing below. Uh, and uh, DNF installs this. Uh, blah, blah, blah. 
some files. So there's some uh, cleanup being done. Uh, uh, and kernel modules are injected in a slightly different manner, and I, I get an image. Uh, so that's that's it, more or less. Uh, I cannot boot this image right now because, well, the, the, this would break the presentation. So let me uh, return to the previous screen. So. Uh, so this this builds an inter D image for my machine. Um, I could uh, build an inter D image for uh, for for a different um, for a different um, version of the kernel by specifying uh, overriding the, the, the version of the kernel package, uh, and I can also specify uh, a release version and so on. So if I want to build an image for uh, Fedora Rawhide uh, or for a different version of Fedora, of course, th this works. I just need to specify, uh, I need to pass some, some arguments to, to DNF, uh, and this all works nicely. Um, and so I said that the images are bigger. So uh, the image that I, that I built was, uh, a VM and Bash and a bunch of other things uh, is about twice as big as the uh, image that Dracut builds on my machine. Uh, and if I unpack it, it is the difference is more than two. Uh, so uh, I mean, Dracut is 77 megabytes unpacked. My image is 165 megabytes. Uh, and if I actually look at the files that are there, um, the biggest difference is that uh, I have 37 megabytes of kernel modules, while Dracut uh, selects only five megabytes. Sorry, there's some uh, farm equipment uh, moving around. Hopefully, it will go away. Uh, and uh, the, this is because I want to take everything that is in the kernel core RPM. It has a bunch of modules. Uh, on the other hand, Dracut pulls in modules one by one that it thinks are necessary. Uh, I think that uh, kernel maintainers are better, uh, well, know more about the kernel and, and they could provide a, um, some small kernel sub package that would have the, the basic set of modules that are needed for most machines. And this would be better than us trying to figure out uh, what is the appropriate list um, in particular because uh, kernel modules can be well provided as modules or they can be built in new modules appear over time and so on uh, it's I mean it's like with any other package it's better for the maintainers of this package to to, to decide what should be split into which sub package and then there is some actual binaries so the difference is about two times um, and this is because basically, uh, I mean, those are the same binaries, except that in, in, in my image, there's more of them. Uh, but this is kind of easy to fix, right? Because if we split RPMs, maybe um, uh, there are usually no direct dependencies between binaries, and it's kind of easy to, to split a, a binary with multiple uh, programs into sub packages with, with libraries this could be more complicated because you have dependencies right um, and uh, in particular this this the, those binaries that are that are uh, present in those images are uh, either from util Linux and util Linux is being split uh, already in in rawhide it's split into util Linux and util Linux core this happened independently of, of this, this, this uh, idea here. Um, also, uh, there's a bunch of binaries from system D and system D is being split over time into multiple sub packages uh, for, for various other reasons. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll need to do it even more, uh, but I think it's, I mean, it shouldn't be too hard. And then uh, 
the actual list of libraries uh, and their size and so, so also this means that the, 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 the libraries that we get is very similar um, uh, and then there are certain prices so uh, I have uh, 11 10.5 megabytes more in user share and one of the items that surprised me is that there's three megabytes of license files, uh, five megabytes of uh, zone info data. Uh, zone info is actually, uh, it, I mean, there was a proposal uh, to uh, stop pulling in zone info from, I mean, right now it is pulled in from glibc and glibc doesn't really need it. So maybe it seems that this will go away on its own. Uh, and then there is some stuff like um, certificates and terminal info. I don't know. We might need it or not. It doesn't. I mean, it's a smaller, uh, smaller things. Uh, and surprising, at least to me, is that uh, Jakut does not install the hardware. Uh, I mean, the, the binary version of the, of the uh, system D hardware database. Uh, and I think. Uh, I mean, I think this is wrong uh, because, uh, I mean, it's not, not really an error in track, but it's on purpose uh, because the idea was that you start with some minimal uh, set of UDEF rules in the initRD and then uh, transition to the real system uh, and then you have more rules there and you redo hardware detection. Um, I'm trying a simpler approach where we start with the uh, full set of UDEF rules that are uh, specified by, by uh, packages that are installed. Uh, and um, uh, well, this means that we need the hardware database, but this also means that uh, things are described and behave uh, as expected earlier on in some cases. Um, so, uh, that's it about the implementation. And now I'll talk a bit about where I want to go with this. So uh, we built uh, the images on the host because we like to, well, we need to customize the, the components that go into those images. Uh, and uh, this also means that the, the images on every host are uh, on every machine are slightly different um, and uh, they, they, they cannot be signed centrally. I mean, they, they could be signed locally on those machines, but, but you need your own signing infrastructure. Uh, if we want to have uh, distribution-wide signatures, this is, this is, well, fundamentally incompatible. Um, and if we are building images from RPMs, they they are producible and they are the same on on every machine. Um, well, if we use a specific template, they they will be uh, the same. Uh, so I want to be able to create uh, initRD images in Koji or or somewhere in 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 the centralized infrastructure and sign them like we sign the kernel um, uh, or the bootloader. Um, and this, this, uh, I mean, this would require some setup, but it's does it's not complicated. But it doesn't. I haven't answered how to deal with the uh, the problem of local customizations, and uh, I have an idea how to make this work. Uh, so let me do another demo. Sorry, I have to switch the screen again. So. Uh, System D has this um, feature. Uh, it's, it has been out for a while, but maybe it's not widely known. It's called uh, SysExt, System D Ext, or uh, something like that. It's very hard to pronounce. Uh, um, so I was testing this uh, before. So let me undo my status. Okay, so. I have no extensions, uh, and uh, I also, for the purposes of this demo, uh, 
I installed Clang. So I don't have Clang. Uh, I don't have the, I don't have the Clang package installed. And what is a systemd extension? It's a a, a small file system. Uh, uh, it's a small file system that uh, contains just a uh, slash user and at runtime uh, systemd will mount this the contents of the of this um, slash user partition uh, on top of our existing uh, slash user directory so uh, i mean it's easier to do than to say so uh, first let me show this this file here uh, it, you can see that it's less than a megabyte and i will mount it uh, 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 to a temporary directory to, to look at the contents and if i find uh, or find on this you can see that it has a slash user and a bunch of files that correspond to the contents of the clang rpm uh, if i unmount this uh, so let me do this once again clang is not present uh, and now i will uh, I will tell systemd to merge the extensions. So uh, what it does, it, it um, looks uh, in a set of directories like varlib extensions and user share extensions, and any that are found are merged uh, into user. So if I now uh, look how user is mounted uh, it's an it's an overlay fs so uh, systemd is just doing some uh, mount namespace tricks to 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 make the contents of this um, extension visible and as you can guess i have clang uh, now available if i unmerge things uh, well my my user is not a mount point anymore uh i mean i have normal lvm on on uh on the root drive and um no clang again and uh, i can have multiple extensions like this so uh is this uh please let me know in the chat if this this explanation is kind of uh, sufficient uh, as a as a as a small introduction. So, okay, let me continue. So we have we have this this um, we can do those extensions. Now, the important part, uh, the important uh, feature that is useful for the interd is that those this is done at runtime, right? We uh, kind of build the uh, slash user. Uh, directory through from multiple parts and uh, this is not done before we boot into the system but while the system itself is running uh, uh, so returning to the, to the problem at hand i want to be able to customize images and i want to do this centrally so uh this, the the inter the, um, the system D that is running in the interd can can load extensions on it on its own. Uh, so so the idea is that we would build uh, the kernel uh, as we do in the uh, distribution infrastructure. Sign it there. Uh, we would build an interd that matches the kernel. Uh, also sign it, and then uh, build this some curated set of system extensions like for example for networking or for iSCSI or for uh, I don't know SSHD in the um, uh, in the near term FS and so on and each one would be signed again right because this it's built from distribution packages so so we, we trust the contents uh, and uh, then uh, at runtime 
the bootloader or the firmware loads the kernel uh, and the interd and verifies the signature on them and passes control to the uh, well puts the kernel and the kernel starts the the inter the, the, the contents of the interd uh, and then in the interd we uh, load we we, ha we get some list of extensions we verify signatures of them um, and uh, mount them and to make this quick the um, extensions would be would provide uh, integrity verification with DM Verity. So uh, the way that DM Verity works is that you have a, a a block device. Well, one of the ways a block device with two partitions. One is like the data partition where you have some set of files and the file system and files, and a second uh, uh, second partition where you have hashes that verify the mm, uh, each block in the data partition has a a short hash in the hash partition and th this this gives us a, a long list of hashes and then we we have another set of hashes that hash those hashes and then another layer of hashes that hash all hashes so we build it we build a tree of hashes and in the end we end up with one hash that verifies the next layer of hashes and the next layer and so on recursively. And then this last layer of hashes verifies the uh, data partition. So in the end, we have one hash that we need to verify externally. Uh, so this hash would be signed and verified uh, by system D. Uh, well, uh, and it will be signed in the during the build, but verified by system D before loading the extension. And then um, the kernel will do the rest of the verification, and because this is done, uh, I mean, doing this with DM Verity is nice and quick because we don't need to verify everything. We just verify the blocks that are loaded when they are loaded. Uh, and this, this, this altogether, this gives us a mechanism to um, build a full uh, chain of trust for for the for everything that we load in the interd. Uh, so, uh, current status. So, uh, well, I, I use the uh, uh, QMU virtual machine for development. This works nicely. Uh, my laptop also boots nicely. Uh, I have LVM and I have uh, and full disk encryption with Lux. Um, uh, emergency mode also works um, and. This is this, this was actually very simple to do because I could say that I want to uh, add um, the debug shell service to uh, to the emergency target and, and you know, without any further work I get this for free. Uh, hibernation and resume also works. Uh, I didn't test uh, the fancy stuff like uh, you know networking. Um, setup of networking or networking uh, file systems and so on but uh, I mean they work in the host so in principle they, they could and should work also in the interd uh, uh, some parts are completely missing um, so in particular I mentioned that uh, we switch back to the interd for shutdown and I uh, the, I mean, something like this will need to be done in this scheme too, but it can be done in a, a simpler fashion. Because right now, uh, the way this works is that when we are booting, Jackwood will zip up the interd image that it was booted with, uh, store it in uh, memory, like in, in slash run, for the lifetime of the of the system, and then unpack it again at shutdown. So uh, I want to do just this last step. So skip the zipping part and uh, unpack a file from the file system for shutdown. We don't need to match the uh, version of the interd that we shut down with, with the version that we booted the machine with. Um, uh, yeah, so some, I mean, there's thousands of details to be figured out. Uh, I, uh, I mentioned that the uh, I mean, I made some pull requests to uh, CPO, uh, to MKOSI, and they have been merged. Um, 
and also to system D. Uh, this this is, uh, I mean, the biggest parts are done. There, there are still some minor things to, to do. Um, and actually, a big chunk of work will be in packaging, uh, to, if this is to be to, to, to be made really possible. In particular, the kernel RPM needs to be split uh, better. Because right now, there is a kernel core, kernel modules, and kernel modules extra, and kernel modules internal. And uh, the way that the, 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 the I mean, the kernel core has the, the actual image, um, um, which I don't want. And it also has modules, but all of them in one big chunk. Uh, and instead, I think it, it should at least be split. I mean, at least the, the, the module should be the, uh, the kernel image should be split into a separate RPM. Uh, for example, uh, if we have a, a direct kernel boot with KVM, uh, we want the we need the, 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 the kernel image on the host and the kernel modules uh, inside of the of the of the guest. And right now the the kernel package does not make it easy. You have to install both in, uh, to, to, to get the files. Um, and uh, there is plenty of minimization work to be done. In, in particular, uh, if, if you, when you look at the list of uh, packages that gets, gets installed, there is uh, Dbus, and it's pulled in by systemd. Um, I think it's, it's reasonable to, to to down to, to not not pull in dbus uh, and um, this means that certain things will not work in the entire d but uh, those are mostly like higher level user related functionality so uh, th this should be okay um, we have a bunch of libraries in two copies like pcre and pcre2 uh, uh, libcap which is tiny but it's also annoying to have it twice uh, Shadows util utils is a big package and it's completely unnecessary because we would never create additional users in the um, uh, interd while it's running. Uh, and even if we were to create some user, we wouldn't need to set a password for the user. Um, util Linux is being split up already. Uh, and there, there are some strange things being pulled in through dependencies. So, so like the, the full set of repositories and time zone data. Uh, I hope this that this gets fixed. And uh, an important one is uh, crypto libraries. Um, it seems that we'll finally have OpenSSL3 with a more, more uh, I mean, with a nicer license. And this means, this means that we will be able to um, well, for example, in system D, we, we use libgcrypt uh, because we don't want to link to OpenSSL in all cases because Debian does not uh, treat OpenSSL as a system library. And with this with this upcoming version three uh, of OpenSSL, this is this stops being an issue, and we hopefully uh, we can have just one crypto library uh, required by system D, and then maybe we could have just one crypto library in the entirety image, and also in other minimal installations. Um, also, uh, Polkit uh, is probably unnecessary. Uh, and if all those things are done, then the size of the image should drop nicely. Um, and it will be actually pretty close to a um, to the size of the Dracut image. Um, and well, that, that's, that's all that I have. So. To summarize, uh, you know, build intra-RAMFS images directly from system packages, uh, use systemd, uh, use RPMs, uh, and sign and, every, and verify everything uh, in central uh, distribution infrastructure. Um, so, uh, I don't know, questions? Do I have a q and A? I I have Q&A. Um, 
so what about using FS Verity instead of DM Verity? Uh, I don't know. I, I, will, I will look into this. I am... Um, Mm. Uh, I, I, sorry, I cannot answer this uh, uh, right now at all. Uh, how do we deal when people install drivers and things afterward? Well, uh, so basically, um, the idea is that if you, I don't know, if you uh, Add a, 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 an iSCSI mount, and you need it in the inter D. You would also pull in and uh, some additional extension uh, in the inter D that would be present, uh, and it would deal, deal with that. So, uh, my idea is that um, right now, when we we have multiple uh, init rd images uh, uh, for, for for example for multiple versions of the kernel each one is a is a complete uh, set of things on its own but the extensions they could be uh, shared between um, multiple uh, versions of the of the init rd so um, maybe we, we we could use the space that we have more efficiently. Uh, uh, yeah. So basically, the idea is to to, to add extensions. Uh, uh, what about live media? Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, maybe live media would use a different recipe. I I I don't know. I don't know enough about like media. Uh, how are we supposed to deal with third party drivers and such? Uh, well, so first of all, even if the scheme is adopted, the, the old scheme wouldn't go away, right? Um, and you could, you can always, uh, in, even if we have centrally built images, you can always build an image like I'm doing right now locally. So it wouldn't be signed. Uh, maybe, uh, so one uh, option is to say that, um, well, it's not, it wouldn't be signed and you're, you build it locally and you're not worse off in any way than right now. Another option would be to say that if those um, third party drivers are uh, distributed by, by somebody else, they could sign it and uh, you, uh, the user could add another s signature to, to trust to, to local um, setup. Um, but, well, you know, I don't think that this, uh, this, this makes things significantly worse for third party drivers, right? I mean, you would probably need to, to build the image locally and then you just lose the central signing, but that, that's it. Um, Okay, uh, so I hope I've, I have answered the questions. Um, uh, and uh, well, that's, that's it, uh, I guess. Uh, thank you for attending.